This week, I'm gonna go and shoot the stars with four different cameras. One is a point and shoot, one is a bridge camera, one is a micro four thirds, and one is a full frame sensor. I'm just wondering how much difference the big sensor will actually make when shooting the stars. I'll keep the 25 millimeter on the Sony a7R. On the GH4, I have the 12 to 35 2.8, so I'll keep that at 12. Then with the other two cameras, they don't have removable lenses, so I'll just shoot as wide as possible. So it was a new moon last night, I knew the Milky Way would be out between three o'clock and five o'clock in the morning. So I headed out to a relatively dark place to see if I could see the Milky Way. Normally I'd only shoot with one camera. I found in shooting with four different cameras, the two hours went really quickly. So I didn't get a brilliant shot, but I got a shot of the stars with each of the cameras. So I've put all of the images onto my computer. So let's have a look to see what we've got. I haven't processed these at all, so these are pretty much straight out of the camera. I did tweak the exposure a little bit on a few to try and get the exposure exactly the same on each one of them. The surprising thing I found was every one of the cameras did really well. Normally with this shot, I would have used a little bit of light on the tree to make it stand out a bit more. But what I found was each of the cameras really did pick up the Milky Way. And I was really surprised about this. I kept them all to around about 13 to 15 seconds so the stars wouldn't streak. And I kept the ISO as low as I could. One thing that really surprised me was how well the RX10 and the RX100 did. They both shoot in RAW, so they do capture a lot of detail. The GH4 has a micro four thirds sensor, so the sensor is slightly bigger. Again, I was surprised at how well the GH4 did. With the RX100, it was very tricky to get the focus right. I literally had to take a shot, change the focus slightly, take another shot, change the focus slightly, and keep doing this. So this is the tricky thing with the cheaper cameras. This was the same issue with the RX10. Again, with this, it was really tricky to focus. And this is why I always say to buy a manual lens. The Samyangs that I use are fully manual, so I know exactly where the infinity point is. With the A7R Mark II and the Batis 25mm, even though it's still focused by wire, on the LCD screen, when you have it in manual focus, it tells you exactly where it's focusing to. So it'll say how many meters it's focusing to or whether it's hitting infinity. Now what I'm gonna do is edit these images and see how they stand up. They're all raw images, so they should cope with the editing process quite well. I did a really rough, quick edit on the photos, but very quickly, the Sony a7R really stood out and I was able to push and pull the image a lot more than others. I'd spend a lot more time editing my photos normally, but I'm just doing this to show you what the difference is. So now if we look at the GH4, we can see even though I've put a lot of noise reduction on it, there's still quite a lot of noise in the image. It's quite a dark image and I found it really hard to bring up the shadows. But the main thing is the stars. The stars are really good. So it's just a case of coping with the darker patches. So if we move on to the RX100, again, you can see this is quite grainy. With these high ISOs, you're gonna get grain in your image. And if you zoom in one to one, you'll really see this grain. Now, if we switch across to the A7R, you can really see the difference. It's a lot brighter and a lot cleaner. Again, if we zoom in, there is noise there, but if we look at the detail in the stars, you can see we've got a really nice Milky Way. With the smaller sensor cameras, you can see the image is a little bit mushy. It starts to break up at these higher ISOs. And that's where the A7R and say the A7S are really good. So another thing, if we look down here at the tree, we can see the detail with the A7R Mark II compared to the RX10. So I think on the RX10, the focusing was a little bit out. And this comes back to the problem I was having with focusing the cameras in such low light. If you've got a manual lens, or if you have a lens that lets you make minute adjustments like the Batis, this is when you can get your focus spot on. With the RX100, surprisingly, this did well, and I got the focus again. With the GH4, the focus was all right, but it does seem to struggle in low light. Now, I know this really isn't a fair comparison, 
but I wanted to see how the smaller sensored cameras coped in the low light. Basically, I'm looking for a cheap astrophotography package that I can show you guys, so then you can get out there and shoot the stars and shoot the Milky Way. Even though the a7R does stand out, and I've been ripping apart the other camera's images a little bit, I was pleasantly surprised by the quality that they give. I know now that if I just had a GH4, or even if I just had an RX100, I could still safely go out and take some pictures of the stars. And that's about it. I hope I've shown you that you don't need an expensive camera to take a photo of the stars. You just need to know your camera, the settings on your camera, and what settings to use to get good photos. So now you've got no excuses. The next clear night, find a safe spot, set your camera on a tripod, and take some photos of the stars. If you're not sure how to do it, click on the link in the corner. This will take you to my astrophotography video. As always, if you like what you see, give me a thumbs up. If you don't, give me a thumbs down. And for weekly tutorials, hints and tips in photography, subscribe and turn on notifications. I'll see you in the next one.